I don't understand why this continues to be a problem in 2024, but we're gonna talk to you today about your CPU and motherboard combination might be trying to kill itself on purpose. NZXT's BLD is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator, which now includes Intel's 14th gen CPUs featuring faster cores with increased core counts and speeds up to six gigahertz for an overall better gaming experience. Don't want to build it yourself? Then choose from BLD's pre-configured player PC systems built with performance and various budgets in mind. To see the full lineup and specs of the NZXT Build Player Series pre-built PCs, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So what I'm referring to right here uh, specifically is optimized defaults in motherboards. The reason why I'm even making this video, I've talked about it in the past, but it continues to be a problem that's been ongoing since like, I wanna say the seventh gen, eighth gen Intel era. Now this isn't an Intel problem. It's just because Intel CPUs are like, unlocked and overclocked pretty much for all the SKUs unless it doesn't have a K. In fact, there's less non-overclocking SKUs or unlock SKUs than there are locked SKUs. Like, it, the locked SKUs are the rare ones these days. But anyway, moving on. Um, Asus seems to be the biggest offender, but pretty much every motherboard company has some sort of an optimized like algorithm they've put together through all of their testing that says these CPUs on average can overclock about this far and get away with this much additional power limit, this much additional voltage limit, this much additional temperature, etc. What ha the reason why I'm making this video though is not just because of the fact that this continues to go on even though I'm, I will get to it. I've got so much I wanna cover in this video and I don't wanna have it be a 45 minute video. But I'm getting emails from people still saying, I don't understand, I've got a 360 millimeter cooler, I've got a 280 millimeter cooler on a 13700K and my CPU is running 100C, what the hell is going on? And then they'll send me a screenshot from like hardware monitor or something and I can see like 1.48 volts on their CPU. And every single time it's the same story. They never touched anything in their motherboard. Heck, not even enabling XMP. A lot of people don't even know to enable XMP. So what you're getting here are out of the box default settings that are automatically applying not just a potential overclock of 100 to 200 megahertz per CPU, you know, per E-core and P-core on its own because of optimized defaults, but an extreme lift of all of the voltage and amp and turbo timer settings when it comes to Intel. So this video is specifically gonna be for Intel. This doesn't really happen on AMD CPUs. Um, not so much because AMD CPUs are so finicky, they, they actually can't push them as nearly as far as you can with Intel stuff. So what I've got sitting right here is an Intel 13900K, but I, what, here's what I'm gonna show right here. I'm gonna hit, I, I have settings that have been applied for other videos, we're gonna ignore that. What I'm gonna show is F5, which is load optimized defaults. There's some very important verbiage there. It does not say load Intel defaults. It says load optimized defaults, which means the defaults of the BIOS and that motherboard for that particular CPU. So what happens is the CPU and the motherboard talk to each other, they identify, right? And then so what happens is um, the, the motherboard is able to say, oh, based on this CPU, these are the types of settings we tend to push. So I've reset the optimized defaults. Asus multi-core enhancement. That is above and beyond anything from Intel. That is an ASUS applied settings change in the BIOS. It says auto, let BIOS optimize. <sighs> the problem with let BIOS optimize is it's gonna automatically go in here and start changing some settings. So if we come down in here to internal CPU power management, 360 amps, uh, 154 watt long power package limit, 253 watt short duration power package limit. So th that's that's actually the Intel settings right there. So I've just rebooted with the let BIOS optimize. So you can tell now by the fact that our DRAM frequency is back down to 4.8, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm gonna go down to our power limits once again, CPU power management. Yeah, so do you see how they went up? You see that, right? So we went from 253 watts, that's our long duration power limit, but it's gonna try and pull, basically 4,095 watts is unlimited. 511 amps, initially it was 316 or something like that, 311, somewhere around there. So essentially the auto feature or the default, which is the way this motherboard will boot because default is auto let BIOS optimize, removes the Intel limits, period. My major gripe with this, is the motherboard manufacturers need to load the Intel limits by default. 
it leads people to thinking something is wrong with their thermal paste or something is wrong with their cooler when they go to load a, a test like Cinebench because they see us do it and they want to compare and then they see 100C instantly and throttling. So let me go ahead and boot into the BIOS real quick. So that, or not the BIOS, but the C set. I, I, I don't know if you saw it, but I just said F10 exit and it's like no changes were made because that's the way it rebooted with those new ridiculous limits in place. So what I'm gonna be looking for right now is how much voltage is our <laughs> CPU gonna be trying to, now, now this is also a thing that has become a point of contention between the CPU manufacturers and the motherboard manufacturers and the reviewers, is the motherboard manufacturers always say, the motherboard never provides more voltage than the CPU asks for. And that's complete horseshit. It always seems to, if that wasn't the case, how can we go in and change voltage in the settings? How can we go in there and set a voltage? The BIOS is optimizing its own voltage, which is erring on the side of stability, which is shove as much voltage down its throat as you can and let it slow down so it doesn't die. Then you're not getting the performance that you're paying for. So then you have a big ass cooling system to try and keep very poorly optimized settings acceptable. And then you just lose performance and you paid money for stuff that you're not getting, which is the full performance of your CPU. So this is Cinebench R23. It's a free tool you can download if you wanna follow along with this video and see what your CPU is doing. This is also hardware monitor by CPU ID, which gives us the visibility of all the stuff happening, all the sensors in our system. We can keep an eye on our frequency right here. So you can see we, are, we do have a core running at 5.8 gigahertz on single core, which is exactly what we expect to see with the Intel stuff. 5.5 gigahertz all core. And then our E cores are down here at 4.3. I think I said 3.7 earlier. I actually mixed up the specs of like the 13700 or the 13600. The 4.3 is the E core um, max turbo limit or ratio for the 13900K. So what we're looking for here is obviously our temperatures on our cores, but more importantly, this guy right here, V-Core, is sitting at 1.305. Now that's not necessarily a problem. Intel does the same thing AMD does, which is for ultimate stability with fluctuating workloads that are not 100%, put more voltage that way as the dynamic frequency range is changing on the CPU, it doesn't run into stability problems. That's normal. I see people all the time that go, my CPU is running 1.4 gigahertz, something's wrong just sitting at the desktop. It's like, that's perfect. <laughs> well, I see people all the time messaging me saying, oh my God, my CPU is running at 1.4 volts sitting on the desktop doing nothing idle. It's, it's trying to kill itself. It's like, no, actually it's, it's not hurting it whatsoever. Look at our temps, we're in the twenties, right? So every, everything's fine right there. And it dropped all the way down to 1.119 for a second. But anyway, um, let's just run a loop, shall we? Let's see what our V core goes to. Under load. 1.323, we're at 88C on the package instantly, and I have a 360 AIO, which in my opinion is far, far too warm. Now sure, we might be sitting here on mid 80s on the P cores and upper 60s and mid 70s on the E cores. This room is like 62 degrees Fahrenheit right now. This is not, this is not a warm room whatsoever. So already it's getting a little bit of a help by the fact that the ambient temperature in this room is pretty, it's like chilled. It's chilly in here, right? It's, it's still cold right now. But our voltage is running 1.288 and we're still at 5.5 gigahertz all core. Now I just heard it slow down. We should end up dropping on frequency here shortly. We're at 320 watts. So after a few seconds here, we should see this drop down to that much lower 100 and whatever watt setting. Or actually it should drop down to 253 watts because that's what it showed. But check this out, 91C so far is what we've hit on the package. 91C, that is pretty ridiculous. Look, so we now have 90, our max core is at 91C, that's core seven right here. We got a hot core there. Our colder core is 81. We have a huge swing <laughs> between hot and cold on certain, certain cores. All right, so now we just slowed down to 253.5 watts because we've hit our turbo timer. Look at our temps now. 77, mid 70s on the P cores, low, mid and upper 60s on the E cores and our clocks drop from 5.5 down to 5.2. There it is right there. 5.1, 5.2. It's an interesting test because at, at the end of the test, there's 5.1 again, it stops load for us just like a second and then goes back. So that load drop kind of freaks out that turbo timer for a second but our E-Core has dropped all the way down to 
What if I told you, if I went into the Intel limits, we would, uh, and then if I just manually change that second number from one whatever, 100 and some odd watts on after 56 seconds to 253 watts, which is stock by having proper cooling, we could keep our clock speeds and these temperatures. Okay, so I went into my BIOS, so I, I disabled the disabling of the limits or the removing of the limits. So I have disabled to enable the limits. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this now is all Intel settings. So I'm also gonna leave internal, uh, ad adaptive boost technology, sure, was leave that on auto, that's fine. AI overclock, this would be for XMP, but I, I had it off before, so I'll leave it off now. And if we come down here to our internal power management, you can see now 360 amps, 253 watt, and 253 watt, which is funny because we think it might be an i9 setting or feature where the before and after, uh, if the cooler gets at least decent prediction, it might turn that off, but uh, it's not, it means it's just gonna run 253 watts the entire time. So what that means now is if my, if my calculations are correct, we should see that 77 Celsius on our CPU the entire time. So the first thing I'd like to point out on vCore is it's, it's currently idling at 1.314 is where it was, but it drops all the way down to 1.012. That's just because it doesn't have some stupid crazy amp limit in there. Because amps and volts are directly, watts, amps, and volts, they're all directly related. They're, cal they're calculation, right? So you can determine what one of those three numbers is by knowing the other two numbers. So by having the amps be set super high, it goes, oh, we got a lot of voltage available to us. Even though we don't have a lot of wattage, we have a lot of available voltage to us. So it could start pumping the volts really high. But now that it's back to the default 360 amps, which is the, the maximum amount of amperage allowed on the Intel specs, the volts are gonna come down. But watch what happens when we start our test. 71, 72, there are volts, 1.199. Now the frequency came down slightly at 5.2 and then 5 or 4.1 on the E cores. And that right there, we can just go in and actually just play with the multiplier. So our score though right there was a 37,068. Like that's because of the fact that we had the reduced clock speed. So if we get back to the 5.5, we'll be up at like 38, 39,000. So let's do that real quick. So looking at the AVX instruction uh, page on here, you can see it actually has a zero offset and it's showing 5.5. So realistically, the, the overall clock speed came down because that was how it had to control the wattage. To keep the watts at 253, where it limits itself is actually in the core clock because of the fact that the volts were already, I guess, as low as it felt like it could go. And this is where vol voltage tweaking would really come in and be handy. Now this behavior is actually acting exactly as Intel has intended. What happens is the motherboard manufacturers say, no, we wanna make it you know, stronger. So they go in there and they adjust these, these, you know, particular defaults, if you will. And every motherboard manufacturer is different. You could take, I could take the same CPU off this ASUS board and put it on a Gigabyte board and get different behavior, on an MSI board and get different behavior, and on an ASRock board and get different behavior. They would be the, they, it's just whatever the motherboard manufacturers program to their defaults. I'm not gonna go in here and do full on like core clock control because I tend to actually run the, um, XMP1 on here, and because I have decent enough cooling, I tend to come in here and do the, where'd it go? The AI overclocker, I forgot where it is, it's in here somewhere. And then the AI overclocking tends to actually get us like six gigahertz single core and about five, 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 six all core on there. And that's gonna be based on everyone's different motherboard uh, configurations, their CPU, their cooler, their environment, how, how hot the room, the computer's in matters. So I wanted to make this video and put it out there. If you're seeing extremely hot temperatures, and you can't explain why. You're like, I've got the good thermal paste, I've got a really good cooler, I've got lots of airflow in my case, and every single time I run Cinebench or some other stress test, I'm getting 95, 100 C on my Intel CPU. What the hell's going on? I guarantee you the problem is not your CPU or your cooler. It's probably your motherboard settings. So do yourself a favor, go in, at least find where the Intel limits are, enable those limits, and then see if your problems go away. But this is something that needs to stop. This needs to stop happening on motherboards. It has been happening for like the last six or seven generations of Intel right now where motherboard manufacturers are by default enabling way too high of a limit, which also increases the voltage, which increases the temperature for no reason whatsoever. It is my personal belief that the settings on a motherboard out of the box without touching anything should always 
always follow the limits of the CPU that is installed. Period. End of story. No motherboard manufacturer will ever be able to convince me otherwise. They shouldn't be able to convince you either. So if you've been dealing with tons of weird temperature fluctuations in your system, start here by looking at your BIOS. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Sign off down below if you've dealt with this. I'm sure you probably have, or maybe you are dealing with it right now and you have no idea until this video. Also share this video with someone that you think might benefit from learning about these settings. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.